And I've got a couple of new tools I want to look at. We've got Mixroom and Bassroom, which are basically a completely new look on EQ. Well, let's just open them up and have a look at them because they they work very differently, but they're kind of intuitive and smart as well. I've undecided yet really as whether they're must have tools. I've not spent too long with this. I've barely got to grips with it, but instead of our normal like left to right EQ, like if we bring a neutron up next to it and jump to the EQ, you know, we've got low frequency down here, high frequency up here, and we move bands up and down. Instead on this, this is represented kind of like how you see and feel audio. Low ends at the bottom, high ends at the top, and you push it forward or bring it back. But I like the smart features. So what I've done here is I've taken a break from one of my other tracks that's mixed down really, really well, um, which is Like a Fool, to the point that the mastering engineer was like, this is superbly mixed, the separation's fantastic. When other people tell you that, you know you've done well. So what we can do here, this little guy at the bottom, let's just drop a target, and it says drop files, click to search. I've made three files, and they're different split outs from that track. I've got the break, the reese, and the synth, and they're all isolated in their own different kind of spaces in the mix. So if I take the break now, open it, it's gonna load the break in there for me, and I can just loop around that section, ignoring that end bit there, because that would affect the, the overall uh, like profile that's gonna build, and it will give a target based on that break. Now there's all the same elements in this break, so it should give a relatively good balance. So when I do create target, now does some voodoo for a second or two, and nothing's really happened. Now we feed it some audio going in, so feed it our break essentially. And what we'll do, we'll do this little chunk here so it does do a switch. And then based on that profile and what we put into it, it'll make an EQ adjustment, hopefully. You can see the red here, and there we go. So it's telling us we're probably gonna dip the highs a little bit, have a little boost around here, and that the lows are maybe a bit too much. So what we can do is just click add smart band and it does it all in one go for us. It does a pretty solid job. Yeah, so it's telling me that ours was just too bright compared to the reference I've given it. And that we could pop that kick out a little bit more which was doing in Neutron already. Now obviously, because it's EQ, we can undo any amount of it that we want. Um, so like the bands here, when you hover over them, it, it isolates just that band for you. And you can see what I mean about how they're laid on top of each other. We can see that this has been pushed back here and it's hidden behind the others as a result. And the bands overlap the same as a Q would overlap, right? So let's say I think this is bringing too much out. I can use the mouse wheel here I can bring those highs back in a little bit. I can push it back a bit more in the mix. I could narrow the band over which it's, it's happening. Could maybe choose to bring the high highs back up, but I think it's done a, a really good job. That's just like the, the main thing I think is really, really useful about this. Being able to take that balance. Now what this does lack is down here, this stops at about 300 Hertz, right? We can see here, 320. So that's where the bass drum comes in, which is the other tool. So if we just jump into plugins here, audio units, this is from Mastering the Mix, and here's Bass Room. Bass Room handles the low end. It's a similar principle, but as you can see, the bands are already in there. Um, and we can do the same thing with this. I could do the same uh, thing of bringing the break in, and this time it's gonna just look at the low end targets for that. So we're gonna do create target, and we'll feed it a signal. As you can see, this, this changes a little bit in terms of the way it operates, but we can adjust just about everything in it the same as we would. It gives us ideas of where to bring things up. I think something like that, and yeah, thinks we don't need all of that there in the 40. It's 
20, maybe there a touch. Much like with the other one, it just gives us a really good guide based on what we had already. Now let's just A-B it. And it is tightening it up a lot like the break that we had and that it comes from. But without and with. It's a very clever tool. And there's a really nice thing as well, this output gain here. You know, it lets us know that we've added some extra gain and that we might need to pull it down if we're, we're A, B in. We might need to lift it up if we're A, B in, because we've cut a lot. So it's half a dB, so it's barely on the register, but we get loads of that high end back, right? Does the same thing here with the, the low end. So we know that actually it's going up a touch and we could bring it to here and that's going to be about the same as it was. a really 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 good job very quickly which is what I like about it now this transcends a little bit further in that let's take this this has got our Reese in right and in here we could now use base room but I'll give it a different profile and I'll give it the profile of the Reese that was from the other track which has got really great separation with the break so we can load it in here. We can take the Reese from Like a Fool as well. Loop over that section. You can see the adjustment happening there as it's listening to the content we've got. I can very quickly, using the mouse wheel, make some adjustments what it thinks that should be like. What do we think? Remember, this is only affecting the low end. This is like, uh, well, it's a zero hertz, but it's 20 hertz up to 320. So it's just the low end. So it's just going to affect that resend. Switch it on. And now, how does it correlate and balance with the break? It is helping things get out of the way. So what about now the fact that this has got the Reese in and all the synthy wavy stuff at the top and I like that I don't really want to affect it but I do want it to balance with everything else because they're split out the way they are we could put mix room after it and we could give this a different target of say the synths from like a fool as well like that we'll create a target it needs an input to work on this one so we'll give it that and we'll see it make that input all right there it is in real time add smart bands okay, not done a huge amount we know that we could double click and put another band in we could bring that real far forward here if we liked some gain this time especially with that mix room boost and it shows here what we need to do where it is right but we need to bring it back probably a decibel or so doing such a good job in helping everything balance together. I think what I would do on the sample here especially is bring the neutron after it, after these EQs. Pump those up. And I'll tighten everything back in with 
compressor after it. Not even necessarily multiband, to be honest. A nice, slow, wavy compressor. Um, so we could put it on like vintage, do something like four. Attack wise, could be super slow, like in the 80s. Honestly, up in the 200s for the release. And just help it stick back together. A bit of control like that super wavy it's not pulling back it's just going to help that stick back in where it was we can take these away but that's made a massive difference to me there's all of the the boxiness and body is being readjusted but it's done it based on another track of mine now one caveat is I've got a really well mixed track that I can pull the stems and parts out of and make all these profiles. Um, and that works for me in kind of this genre. But if you could literally download a, a remix project and use stems that way, you could kind of pull that mix and balance from that track using these tools. As long as you've got a track as far along to this stage, which it's a really useful and clever idea. I'm, I'm liking this a lot so far. It's not sponsored at all, by the way. Um, they, they sent me the tools. I said I'll have a look at them and do a review on them. This isn't sponsored. I'm not hyping them up for no reason. Um, it's just a really interesting way to work. And I like AI tools that make life easier and quicker. Yo, morning, DJ Ride. Hope you are well, my buddy. Like what else can we split out on this? So in the minute we've we've applied like that synth sides to the sample, we've looked at the overall breaks. Um, in this section here, we've got some other other elements. We've got ye, and we don't want to do that. No, we don't want to do that. We want that. And I think Blue Red's drum, doesn't it? So we could look at applying it to this section as well and these sounds and having those be separated out. Like, simple way to do that, let's give these firstly a space next to each other. We'll highlight them both and we'll give them their own bus. Let's call those inst. And we'll do the same thing. There's only really high end in here, so we don't need bass room, but we'll use mix room. And we'll bring in that synth reference from Like A Fool. And we'll use that as our EQ guide for these two being joined together. And it should help fix any balance between the bass and the break as well. So create targets, we'll see it make its targets. Should be fairly subtle adjustments, I would think. That's a massive, massive lift in the high end. Let's just add the smart bands, take it from there. Adding a little bit of gain in, which is fine. It's made them much brighter, but it has taken out something in the lows here, which is around the 2K, which will be where the top of that reef kind of lives probably as well. Let's see now how they all sit in together. So we're going to take the inst, we'll take the break, take the main sample. Let's take all these off. Um, what we'll do, we'll disable them. Oh, thanks buddy, I appreciate that. I, uh, I do my best teaching, what can I say? So we're just checking out this mix room and bass room tool, which effectively it's, it's an EQ, but it's a smart EQ laid out in a really odd way. Um, I'll re-upload this video after the stream so you can check it out in full if you want. But essentially, what I'm doing is taking stems from one of my tracks that's mixed well, I know it's mixed well, and applying the profiles of different sections so I think like mastering where you apply a tonal balance profile over the whole of a track, right? We're doing that, but to different instrumentations or if different areas of the track. 
allowing us to get a, a sonic balance we know that works for this kind of genre straight away. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're just going to disable all of these, listen to it in context, and just reintroduce them and see if it has actually improved it and fixed it. Well, or got us closer. That makes a massive difference to the instruments, right? It really lifts them up. Gain-wise, sort of right where we should be anyway. Okay, so this is the high end of the main sample, so the Reese. All that vocal element. It helps that stand out a bit. This is the tops of the break. And that balance is way better than what I had. And this is the low end of the break, so the kick and the snare body. Which is way better than what I had. But if you've listened, focus on the kick and the snare body. My mix is alright instantly a better balance and this is the low end of the main sample so it's all the Reese all it's doing really is taking away the extreme low end so it doesn't fight the kick as much it's done a pretty solid job and um, what I need to do now really is have a bit of a listen through the track uh, and see what needs adjustment, what stands out, or if we're actually in a pretty good ballpark, because I haven't done that since last week.